There is one God the Father He who created all things Through His Son, the one Lord Jesus Christ The sacrifice for death's pain And there is one hope of salvation at the end and there is one faith the one that purifies from sin and there is one baptism the one Jesus died to give by one spirit into one body that lives through the power of the love that flows through the veins of the Father and the Son and through the children every day Good evening to you once again. Once again, this is the By One Spirit broadcast, and I'm Larry Hale, and this is my son, Elisha. And as always, we're going to be on here with you for about 25 minutes, and we're going to have a good time in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, and we want you to be a part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and let Elisha start us out if he wants to play a song or if he has something on his mind. Uh, we just let the Spirit lead us, and... We pretty much do it spontaneously and just let the Lord be in charge Amen. and it always turns out well. So stick around with us a little while here and um, be a blessing to us and let us be a blessing to you. Amen. I just would like to start out by thanking God for all the uh, all the stuff that it's, it's just so amazing that He provides every day that people walk past. Uh, I mean, uh, from from just the oxygen that we're breathing, it's Amen. good to breathe. Amen. To the sky that's pretty to look at, the clouds that are pretty to look at, even when it's it's raining. You know, I'm just really thankful that uh, the Lord provides all of it. I mean, I really am. Amen. And I'm thankful that God's provided me with you know the grace to be able to live and to 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 know His love for me. You know, just a little bit, just to begin to know it. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 he says it's God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure I'm thankful that he's uh, begun to work in me to do that do the things which please him me too whenever I you know we live our lives before the Lord we're in a constant audience of a great cloud of witnesses before the heavenly angels and before the Lord and his eyes search the earth to and fro and he sees everything mm -hmm. e absolutely everything there's nothing he doesn't see right. it's in a, um, but there's a lot of things he doesn't want to see mm -hmm. there's a lot of things he'd prefer not to see that he sees anyway yeah. and uh, there's a lot of things he hears that he he would prefer not to hear nevertheless he me hears too. it <laughs> yeah. uh, but this song came to me when I was thinking I was telling the Lord I was out praying and I told the Lord, I was thinking on this, I was saying, you know, you there's so many things that you see, there's so many things you hear. I want to be something that you take pleasure in. I want to I want my life to be a life that Amen. you want to see. Amen. That you love to listen to and that you're like, look, this I find some relief in this. I find Amen. some I find some rest in this life. Amen. And the only way that could pop, be possible is by be, uh, to give him the space to work in you. Mm -hmm. That's why I quoted that scripture, and it, this it goes to this. Is... <clears throat> Let my life be a song you love listening to. I don't have much to give, but all I have I'll lay down for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. All I have
just a child in a while I will be gone it's you I seek for Lord I'm weak you alone are strong praise God hallelujah Jesus if I made endless praises with my mouth Lord I know of my heart's what you hear most loud. That's right. Amen. With all the needs that I bring before your throne, my great request is to possess your love as my own. Hallelujah. Let my faith grow stronger. feel that the way I feel it, friend. I can just feel that song just mm. like the dew of heaven settling on the tender herb, just settling in my soul and spirit, because it's reality. Uh, we're singing about, we're singing about something that's real, something that's now, something that's uh, alive. The love of God is all there is. Uh, one brother once said that, uh, that as a fish spends its whole life seeing everything except for the water that sustains it, so man goes his whole life oftentimes and he sees everything except for the love of God which is all encompassing and sustaining him. Like my son said with the oxygen, whether it to be the, the sun and the um, rain or whatever, it's, it's God's love and all of it. It's providing it all. You know, it says in the, in the account of the creation, when it says the Lord rested from his works on the sixth day, he said he, be, he beheld everything that he made, and behold, it was good. Amen. Praise God. You see, it had to be good, and it has to be good because God is good, and good is God. God is the definition of good, and good is the, is the definition of God. And I thank God for that today, to be, to be called to be in the number uh, of true believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and partakers of His Spirit, His life, His divine nature. I'm just so thankful. I really am. You know, one thing I was thinking about mostly when he was playing that song is I just want to say to the viewers out there, uh, there's a lot of you that, that uh, see these broadcasts that know me and that I know you. And we may, we may or may not see each other or hear from each other in person a whole lot. And uh, some of you I don't know, but your brothers and your sisters in the Lord. But to all, to all the, the viewers, to all my brethren, to all the viewers, uh, whether I know you or I don't know you, whether I've seen you recently or, or I haven't, I just want you to love, know I really love you. I really do. I, you know, I see you in my prayers, I assure you, because as the Apostle Paul instructed, I do make prayer and supplication for all saints in the Spirit and indeed for all men. And so I, I'm just, the God's love is in me, not by my own doing, Amen. but by His grace Amen. and His goodness and His loving kindness. Uh, he works in me, like he said, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And his love, and his love in action and in deed, in word and in spirit, that is his good pleasure. And I'm thankful to be a partaker of that today because it's what it's all about. Uh, it's not about anything else. That's right. Jesus gave us one commandment, and Amen. that is that you love one another Amen. even as I have loved you. And the world and 
religious man and everybody else can talk about love and try to do love mm -hmm. and everything. But unless his love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, and unless we are purifying ourselves, even as he is pure, which alone can keep that love flowing mm -hmm. through us, unblocked and unhindered by sin and by the works of the flesh and by spirits of this world that want to parasite onto us, when his love, his, out of his heart and out of his soul, is in us and flowing through us, then that is what his good pleasure is, is to see. Amen. And uh, I'm just thankful because that's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and just to, it's the simplicity of the gospel. This is not about a lot of uh, far out knowledge and hidden things that's that right. people seek after and, and want to, you know, get puffed up in and feel like they're, uh, have something something new under the sun, you know, that other people don't have, haven't had. I got news for you. You can't have or come to anything that hasn't been come to yeah. and had before Amen. because Jesus has been here 2,000 years ago. He suffered. He died for my sins and yours. He took suffering for our healing. Amen. He rose again from the dead and he, he went back to heaven to be at the right hand of his Father to make intercession for all that would come Amen. unto God by him for anything especially for the remission of sins, but for healing, for grace to help in time of need and whatever the need is. And he's been taking care of these needs. He sent the Holy Ghost back on the day of Pentecost. And that's when the love of God was first shed abroad in the hearts and yeah. souls by the Holy Ghost of those who were waiting for him and, and did as he instructed and went and waited in Jerusalem for that glorious promise which he told them in Acts 1 is, was and is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so this gospel has been enacted ever since then. And so the only thing you can come to is the faith that was once Amen. delivered unto the saints. Amen. There's no new thing under the sun, but the faith that was once delivered to the saints is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that makes us able to love one another the way he loved us. Woo, man, I Amen. love it. Praise God. That's Amen. all That's all I need to know. Right. And I, I you know, don't misunderstand me. I, I've always been and still am all about seeking out the knowledge of God. But I'm talking about the knowledge of God. And like I said, God is good. And the scripture says God is love. And so if what we find is not increasing his goodness and His love in us and our Amen. ability to project these things Amen. to others, then it's some other knowledge we're finding yeah. and not the knowledge of God. That's right. So I also know that if I weren't capable of mentally learning or of reading or anything else, that I could still be capable of the conviction of the Holy Ghost Amen. in my heart and soul moving me to seek Him and purify myself and to seek to be... Uh, more after his love in my heart and spirit and more able to convey his love and all of these kind of things that I would still be able to love the peace and seek the peace that is only in him. And so that is, if you've got the love of God, man, dwelling in your heart at the core of your being and his peace is satisfying your soul to the uttermost, and you have the joy that's unspeakable and full of glory, and you can't help but to raise Amen. your hands and praise God and speak in tongues and get moved to dance under the power and shout hallelujah and sometimes get still as a stone and be paralyzed by His glorious peace and just be totally stilled. If you've got that, you've got it all. Amen. You've got the summation and pinnacle of all knowledge that could possibly be attained. Because everything that's called knowledge that is not moving toward that and increasing those things is not knowledge. That's right. It's nonsense. And I don't care anything about nonsense. I didn't get into this for nonsense. Yeah. When the Lord called me 33 and a half years ago, I was in a lot of need. And I'd, I'd already uh, known and, and studied and come to a lot of knowledge of nonsense and uh, some of it was some of it was good stuff, but, but a lot of it was nonsense. And I'd already lived after nonsense that I thought was 
I thought was what it was all about and everything, and and uh, I I was still in a lot of need, and the Lord satisfied my soul. I tasted of the Lord, and I saw that He was good, and that's what I'm still doing. I'm drinking of those living waters of which Jesus said, "If you drink of the water I give you, you shall never thirst." You drink of this water and you'll thirst again. I thank the Lord. The water I give you, he said, will be in you. A well of water springing, springing up. up into everlasting Amen. life. And I thank remember you, the first time it ever sprang up in me. Amen. It was real. It was thank alive you, and powerful. And man, did it clean me and did it satisfy mm. me mm. and did it fill and fulfill me. Amen. And that's just what I've been going after the same way, Amen, the brother. same thing, the same way ever since. Amen. Paul said in Colossians 2 and 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk Amen. ye in him. In other words, Amen. the same way you received him, so walk ye in him. Continue to follow after that. Amen. I just thank the Lord because it's so good, Amen. man. I mean, he's good. Amen. He's good. Woo, kalamashi, lalamaka. I love it. Amen. But I'll, I'll uh, take a break here. and Maybe Elisha's got something, song or Maybe he wants to preach or testify. Amen. I keep going, so <laughs> you better get after it. No, just amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, people like to talk about, uh, I've run across a lot of different wonderful people that they get sidetracked by these, like, you know, like what you were talking about, far off knowledge, secret knowledge, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they like to think that that's meat. And they like yeah. to think that, uh, they, 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 like, for instance, um, they think that knowing like intricate details about uh, you know far off stuff that doesn't even apply to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. far off stuff about the heavenly realms and extra heavens and extra dimensions and universes inside right. of the Bible, and right. you know, and they think that's meat. I'll tell you what's meat. I'll quote Jesus: "My flesh is meat indeed." Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. The the meat of the gospel is doesn't go further away from Jesus. It doesn't go off into heaven and and leave. The cross or leave the resurrection the meat of the gospel goes into the continues to go into who jesus christ is amen. the meat of the gospel is being made to love those who actually hate you the meat of amen. the gospel is literally living as as jesus and being able to pray for those who persecute you to where when people you know there's this thing in the in the that people do because they know that they shouldn't hate people and they know that they shouldn't revile people but they don't they haven't come to that place in their spirit where they've overcome it right so instead what they end up doing is they avoid evil but the Bible doesn't say yeah. avoid evil it says overcome evil Amen. with good and there's Amen. none good but God and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world Amen. so overcome evil with God Amen. so people it so people Amen. approach it and they avoid evil yeah. but what they need to do is they need to overcome evil and that's where this compromising, uh, you know, cotton candy love comes from, is people knowing that they shouldn't revile someone, right. but they don't have the internal power to overcome it right. and to overcome it with good. So they end up in this compromised state to where they just walk away from evil or they just look, well, you know, I can't judge. Well, if you judge righteous judgment, if you're, if you're developed in the spirit by eating the meat, which is the body of Jesus Christ, by, by growing in prayer and growing in Lord, I want to know you. I want to know what you're really like. I don't want to have anything in me that hinders me. Amen. Then you'll be able to go into a situation when somebody does something wrong to you, you literally experience getting to love them like 10 times Amen. more. Like I've experienced it firsthand and when it happened, I was like, Amen. oh my goodness, yeah. this is what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it just grew so much from someone doing something wrong to me, walked in the bathroom and I was like, I, I, just, I was thinking, I was like, Lord, I know that you died for this person. I know it's your desire to redeem them where they're at. And they just did this thing that's really bad. I was like, that's really bad, wrong. And I just felt him speak to my heart and went, yeah, I know, that's the point. That's why I died for him is because it was really wrong. And I was like, I love it. And then he opened this up to me. He says, "He's the person that did this to you is already rejecting my crucifixion. They already despise my death. Mm -hmm. what can they do to you that equals that? Amen. And I was like, amen. And then like oh, just yeah. this huge, I just grew so much in love. And I walked, amen. I literally amen. walked out of the, the restroom after I talked amen. to the Lord about it with the biggest smile on my face and the amen. biggest love for this person amen. who just did this to amen. me. Because like, I was like, oh my goodness, I love you so much more. <laughs> and I was like, this is ridiculous. This yeah. is the gospel. Yeah. But it's amazing. And I wouldn't trade it for anything, man. But the meat of the gospel is, is the body and the blood of the Lord. Yeah. That's the meat. 
And, and he, being the Son of God, God is without beginning and without end, and the Son of God begotten from him is infinite as well. So the meat of his love, just his love, mm -hmm. just the understanding of the cross and the love demonstrated there, just the understanding of the resurrection and the power demonstrated there Amen. is infinite and without end. That's right. you, can, you can go forever on those two things, it, forever into the high priesthood, into the purging of sins, everything. You can just inst infinitely go and you don't, mm -hmm. that is the meat. Yeah. And I love it. It, it tastes Amen. good. Amen. One funny thing, I'll just say this, is that one funny thing I... <laughs> You know, people are like, those are tough words. You know, like if you say, like Jesus said thanks to the Pharisees and stuff, and, uh, you know, Matthew 23 and John chapter 8 and John chapter 10, he said some stuff that was tough. It would been funny if they'd been like, these are tough words, and he'd been like, meat usually is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. And it's just that place of just getting the, getting the world out of you. That's Literally right. getting the mindset out of you That's is right. that Second Corinthians five and seventeen says, "If any man is in Christ, he's become a new creature, and old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new." And we're we're born again by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, like it says in First Peter one and four, and we're born again by the by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever, the incorruptible seed. So we're literally born again by the Spirit. We're meant to, to we are meant to reflect Jesus, but people go through their lives. And there, nobody tells them what old things are. Mm -hmm. Be and so, though old things have passed away, they take them back up because no, because they're not taught what old things are. Mm -hmm. It's an old thing to, 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 to complain about what people do to you. Right. It's an old thing to worry about the future. Right. It's an old thing to sit back and, and, to, yeah. and to, to plot out every scenario of how things could go wrong. That's not faith. Right. Peter didn't, didn't sit back and, all right, all right, okay, yeah, I'll definitely die if I get out of this boat. Like, he didn't do that. Jesus said, come, and he came. Amen. That's pretty good. That was a new thing. That was a new thing, man. Yeah. And you'll do new things with Jesus if, if, you, if you just don't let old things get in the way. And, and man, just having your conscience purified and purged and, Amen. And, and, and living from that place of the Spirit that God's provided without being deluded by old things, you'll, over, you'll overcome everything. Amen. Let me say something. Amen. Two things. There's one thing you said to having the conscience being purified. And Hebrews 10 talks about how that the law couldn't take away sin because of the blood and the bulls and the goats couldn't take away sin. It said nobody, regardless of how many times those sacrifices were made, nobody was ever made perfect as pertaining to the conscience. That's in the first four verses of Hebrews 10. Amen. In Hebrews 9, verses 13 and 14, speaking of the new things have been made available, Amen. Paul said that if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean purified to the sanctifying of the flesh. In other words, purified sin from people in a figure. Yeah. Not literally. Not from the heart and soul. It says, how much more Amen. shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works Amen. to serve the living God? So in other words, faith in Jesus Christ and Galatians 3 and 14 says we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, even as they did at Pentecost, when Peter said in Acts 2 and 33, after, after they had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he said, this same Jesus whom you've crucified, God has exalted to his own right hand and has received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost and shed forth this which you now see and hear. Of course, what they were seeing and hearing was the people being moved by the power of God and speaking in other tongues. And uh, that's what happens when you are baptized by Jesus with the Holy Ghost. But it's the conscience being made perfect. In other words, the conscience, the only way your conscience will, will not tell you that you have sin is if you literally do not have sin in you. Amen. And that's the whole point of what Jesus lived, suffered, died, and rose again for and went back to heaven was to send back the power of his blood, which is his spirit, Amen. that purges the very conscience Amen. of a believer from sin because it purifies the heart and the soul from sin, even as Peter said it did for Cornelius and his household, the first Gentiles to receive the Holy Ghost in Acts 10. And when he was telling about it in Acts 15, he said, God who knows the hearts just or purified their hearts by faith, giving them the Holy Ghost even like he did Amen. unto us. Amen. So it's the baptism of the Holy Ghost that purifies the hearts, and that's what cleanses the conscience and, and, and clears the conscience because 
The conscience will tell you you have sinned as long as you have sinned. And that's what it did under the Old Covenant. No matter how long those sacrifices were made, over how much period of time, over how many years, the people's consciences still were, were aware of sin because they had sinned because it wasn't possible that the right. blood of goats could take away, bulls and of goats could take away sins. But it's when the conscience is perfected like that, that's where the rest comes from. That's where the rest come from, and that's why Paul said in Romans 8 and 1, there's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. There's no condemnation because the conscience tells you, you it doesn't tell you you have sin as long as you remain pure yeah. from sin. Yeah. And there's the rest. Because yeah. without condemnation, there's perfect rest. Amen. Uh, but I went over his time to be able to do another song. So I'll just go ahead and, and, uh, and tell what the other thing was. One was about the conscience. Now I forgot what the other one was. But it was another really important point that I wanted to make about something that he was saying. Overcoming? Uh, huh? Oh, oh, oh. oh uh, but yeah. It was, it was about like what people do to you mm -hmm. and things that people do to you. I learned very early on, very early in my walk with the Lord through a hard experience that there is no legitimate reason to hold on to a bitterness or a resentment. You might, uh, according to the flesh, according mm -hmm. to the mind of this world, you might be totally innocent about something. Mm -hmm. Somebody else might be totally wrong. Somebody may have deceived you or cheated you or anything else while you were doing what's right. And you may take a resentment or a bitterness or unforgiveness mm -hmm. on about that and think, well, I got a right because I was in the right. You don't have a right. Everybody had already done everything that could possibly be done against Jesus, and then they did it to him in person when he was here, and yet he died for all before him, at present time of him, and after he died for all of those things and for all of those sins and for anything anyone could ever do wrong, whether to themselves or to another, he died for all of these things. So in order for us to be able to legitimately hold on to a grudge or a resentment, we have to be bigger, that's greater, right. and more significant than Jesus Christ because that's what he did about it. Yep, he amen. Died. And he rose again to give us what yes. my son was talking about, and that's the power to truly... From the heart, Amen. love those who Amen. do not love us and to do well to those who do not do well to us. Amen. And it just doesn't get any deeper and better than that. So, hope we've been a blessing to you tonight and uh, we look forward to being with you again next time. God bless. God bless.